Good morning, wherever you are in the world. It's always good to be with you, whether it's afternoon or evening. My name is Graham Moore, and I'm always pleased to be with you and always pleased to be with my really good friends who are smarter than I am, Mohammed Shukri in, in Bahrain and Phoebe Francis in Dubai. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning from Bahrain. Greetings to you all from Dubai. Really good, really good. So let me reiterate, as I often do when we start this this conversation, that this is about the leadership challenge, and specifically, it's about the leadership challenge Middle East. Why specifically the Middle East? Because that's where we are from, and that's where we have presented more programs on the leadership challenge. The three of us, particularly me, because I've done a lot more in the Middle East than probably anywhere else, although I have presented it in 17 countries, not this week, but maybe I'll do another 17 next week. So uh, that is that is what we are here to talk about, the leadership challenge, but also leadership overall and how we, when we combine what there is in the leadership challenge and all the research, how we can become exemplary leaders. So gentlemen, good morning, as I have said, are you listening? Mm, depends on what you mean by listening. Oh, yeah, we can we can hear you. You can hear. Oh, you can hear me. Well, yeah. that wasn't my question. My question was, <laughs> are you listening? Oh, Phoebe, are you are you listening? Of course, yes. Ah, oh, listening. So why am I having a bit of fun with this? Well, it's because <laughs> we all know, but don't always pay enough attention to the fact that. Communication is incredibly important as leaders, as people who, who interact with others. Communication is so important. And there's one particular element of communication that I think everybody takes for granted. I've been presenting this particular aspect in so many different programs that I've conducted over the years and I, that includes sales programs and customer service programs and communication skills and, and problem solving and so on. What am I talking about? What skill am I talking about? Well, I say it loud. What skill am I talking about? It's, it's I think, listening. Oh, good. I've got to, I'm sorry. I've got to do, stop doing these bad jokes. Yeah. Listening. Phoebe, are you... Listening. Tell me what listening means for you. Yeah. When I um, hear the word listening, because listening brings the attention and focus to the person you are interacting with. And here, I like to reiterate that leadership is everyone's business. And so that listening is everyone's business. I, I, this is so important, not just as leaders, but as parents, as friends, as people who interact with others in different contexts. Muhammad, what are your views on and, that? Uh, yeah, and as husbands, tell me, ask me about it, because we husbands think we listen. In fact, we cannot not listen. And uh, we have to listen to our wives, all right? So I thought I was listening all these years until uh, I came to know at a certain point in my life, if had I listened more carefully, uh, really listening to my wife, I have, would have uh, saved uh, thousands and thousands of uh, Bahraini dinars. I'll tell you why. Because I always get to my wife the best things I can whenever I feel I, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I want to please her or, or during a specific occasions, anniversaries, and so many occasions. So I try to fly her somewhere, Dubai, or that's a short trip. Uh, longer trips, we go to Europe. And then I came to know if I listen, she's, she loves actually shorter trips, way shorter trips in our small island kingdom of Bahrain. She wants, really loves to go uh, in old neighborhood, drive through old neighborhood, uh, drinking that authentic cup of tea as much as she lives, likes to uh, go to Europe. Yeah, wow. she likes that so much. The level of 
if I listened to her fully, I would have saved a lot of uh, money and didn't have to please her with all this. I'm saying uh, I heard this from her many, many times, but I didn't pay attention. I always wanted to do what I believe it is better. So as a husband, I, I recommend that you really listen to what your wife needs. And, she's, and you'll, you'll hopefully save a lot of money, unless every time she says, the only place I want to go to is Paris and first class and stay in the shop. Oh, oh, no. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. The key, of, of course, is listening. And sometimes tied in with that are assumptions. People make assumptions and they get it wrong because their own filters are processing a certain element of what it is, but they are not listening. They are adding on to the what the words that they might be hearing and they're adding on their own assumptions about what that person really, really means. I want to make a comment about this in the, in the context of the workplace. We've all heard the expression, my door is always open. Now, managers might say, my door is always open. But the question really is, is his or her ears, are his or her ears also open? Is their heart open? Is their mind open? The door may well be open, but they may not be receptive to someone coming in to talk about a problem and then for them to really listen to what that problem is, what that issue is, that concern is, without cutting them off before they've even spoken two sentences. So that's one example of where it's so critical for leaders and managers to listen. Did you listen to that, Phoebe? Yeah, I, I was just reflecting on that phrase. And this thought came to my mind, how much can be this cost saving in organization if we are really listening to our staff members? Yeah. If we are really focus to what they are trying to convey. And sometimes I have seen uh, uh, people in positions of authority highlighting that, don't bring problems to me. And this is a red flag in which you are shutting the window of reflecting on what are the critical issues we have to focus on. Yeah, and imagine that if we suggest to our team members that in case of any problems, any challenges which you face, bring it to my attention and ask this simple question, what are the solutions you think may be suitable? What can bring in that impact? What can change the service for better? This might be actually helping the organization to save huge amount of money which otherwise might have been going to be spent on something unnecessary for the organization. So the listening part is key. And we have seen the last week, last incidental oriented week. Yesterday, we were seeing that uh, uh, like the technology sector having a challenge with crowd strikes updates yes. with Microsoft. Millions of passengers stranded, flights canceled. A few days before, we have seen an attempt in which people were saying there was someone on rooftop, but no one paid attention to. Listening is key in all these situations. Yeah, I'm, amazing. I want to was to talk a little bit now about the the physical context of someone going to their manager or their hopefully their leader with a need to talk to them about something along the lines of what you said Phoebe when someone just says I've got a problem I guess I should talk to my leader my manager about it so sometimes there are certain things that can happen in that context when the person goes to the manager I'll call him manager for the purpose of this conversation and says look I, I can, I, can I talk to you for five minutes yeah sure uh, okay, look, let me just sort this out. Okay, fine. Yep. Uh, you're right. I, I, I'm just going to talk to you to Mohammed. Okay, fine. So what was that, Mohammed? Oh, right. Hang on a sec. I've got to finish this. Uh, where, where's where's the listening? Where, where is the where is the the listening starts, by the way, with the contact of looking at that person, 
not checking on your mobile phone, not taking calls, not being distracted, but giving that person your full attention as a manager, leader, to what they want to say. Uh, this story, I'm, a quick story I'm going to share with you happened years ago, way, way back when I was in another environment. But we laugh about this situation where uh, someone at a re reasonably senior level went to see the deputy managing director. And he said, to the, yeah, do you want to see me? Yeah, I do. I, what do you want to see me about? I, I, want to, I want to talk to you about my career. And this deputy managing director said, will this take long? Uh, no, I think I've just finished it now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there are things that we shouldn't say or we should express differently when someone comes with an issue that requires some attention. And these days, of course, we talk about listening with empathy. So what, what do we think listening with empathy is? Muhammad? I wanted to say when you brought the idea, the example that this leader or whatever manager, uh, I think it's listening is a decision first before anything else. It's a decision leaders must make and the value that listening is above anything else in your relationship is key. It's the most important thing in your relationship with your team is to listen to them. Yes, there is a long list of targets, a long list of projects, a long list of maybe challenges ahead uh, to use the leadership challenge. Uh, but also listening is going to be primarily important before that, that all. Once the leader decides, I want to listen thoroughly with empathy, with everything I can, then then all his troubles and challenges will fall in place because they have a leader who listens and they want to solve problems with him. They want to solve problems for him and they want to work with him. So that listening is very, decision is very key and listening with empathy. Yeah. I will stop there because listening with empathy is something I want to listen to from you guys. Look, when you're talking about, thank you, I'll come to that in, after I've shared this brief example with you. It goes back quite some years, and it's a training uh, that I was doing oh, back in Australia about 25 years ago. And I, I can't remember the name of the company. I had the team members in this one-day training program and their manager, who had only been their manager for a short, short period of time, let's say maybe four months or so. And these team members were confronting a real, they, they had some difficulties that were imply, applied by the organization. It's a little bit like saying, we have no money, but they needed the money. We, you know, there, were, there was one of those difficulties that they, they needed fund resources and, and we just couldn't pluck those resources out of the air. But they made the comment about this, their new, relatively new manager. They said, we we know he can't solve our problems. Now, he's in the room with them. We know he can't solve our problems, but he listens to us. That simple sentence says so much, yeah. doesn't it? We have yes. got a huge problem. We know he can't solve it, but he listens to us. And they respected that, and he likely listened with empathy. Empathy, empathy. Which means that he's going to be saying, well, this is really tough. You guys are dealing with so many difficulties. Let's find a way around this. If I was in that situation every day, you know, this is dealing, this is with empathy, understanding for them what's what their situation is. And not, by the way, just saying, well, that's it. We haven't got any more resources. Just go on with your job. Mm. Or, hmm. or saying, look, it doesn't seem like a big problem to me. He had empathy and he had compassion for what they were going through. And they they were the ones who volunteered this comment about what how much they appreciated what he was doing. But he can't solve the problem. But we really appreciate what he does. Phoebe. Yeah, I, I, when you shared that, I was uh, I, I was reflecting on some organizational practices which I have observed. Quite often, what, what happens in many organizations is as people grow in their career, one over the other, 
you get more responsibility, you get more authority. And sometimes what happens is the power creates a gap between the different layers in the organization. And quite often what happens is uh, the positional authority sometimes, maybe their level of stress due to their responsibilities that make it difficult for them or they forget about listening to people below. And for those people who are below in the hierarchy, they, they consider, okay, if I say that, will he be willing to listen to me? There, there disappears that empathy component by the positional members. And this leads to huge gap. And as you mentioned, the listening leads to uh, retention of employees as well as attrition of employees. When employees feel belong, when they feel that they are listened to and they continue with the organization. And many organizations cannot grow because they have actually closed the listening process internally. And this has led to, if we take examples from this region and across the globe, we can see the n number of examples. I, I just want to reiterate the incident of uh, Boeing Airlines as an example with the 787 MAX. There was flight engineers who said the airline have a defect with respect to their computer alignment and yeah. pilots require training. And I learned that in one of the uh, Amazon documentary that uh, instead of giving pilots physical training on the practices, they gave an uh, online tab to uh, review. Many, Some of them forgot to review that and that led to the failure of falling aircrafts from the sky. And now they are having legal costs, they are having litigation costs, they are having uh, human costs because of uh, the failed flight. So these are all challenges which we experience when listening disappears in the organization. You know, I, I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure just to add one line, I'm sure they heard him, they heard those engineers, but they didn't listen to them. And uh, that's a very good example there, yeah. In, look, in simple terms, we know, those of us who are in the learning uh, environment, we know that listening is not just a sitting there with your ears that are facing the right way. That, that listening requires, as we know, active listening and reflective listening with the various types of listening that have been defined. If I'm actively listening, I can be nodding and I can be smiling and I can be mm, reacting, but I could, be, I could be thinking about the dinner I'm going to cook when I get home that night. So active listening is not just m nodding and, mm, yes, okay, oh, that's tough. Okay. No, that's because I'm thinking of something else. Reflective listening is another simple process where we feed back or we reflect back to the person by paraphrasing or even questioning, saying, let me get it right. Did you say this happened on Tuesday at 3 o'clock? Yeah, okay, great. When we do this, we are confirming to the other person that we have heard and listened and understood. Communication does not occur, in simple terms, it does not occur when the message that is being passed by one person to another person is received by that other person. Not just the sound of the words, but the message that is contained within the words. If that message is not understood by the other person, they, the communication has not occurred. So listening is critical. And listening is something which we often fall victim to as managers because we think we know what that person is going to say. And we like the Boeing situation or someone is trying to bring up a major issue. We think that we know what they're going to say and we interrupt them. We give them a short period of you know, maybe the first sentence and then we interrupt them um, and try to tell them what we think the response is. Here's an interesting, interesting article that I read just recently. It was about it was a Harvard uh, Business Review article, uh, and it might, I may well be in the current Harvard Business Review. But it talked about a physician who did a study of doctors, medical doctors, and their listening practices back in 1989. And what he determined was that 20 seconds after the patient started to explain what their problem was, 75% or a significant percentage of the doctors interrupted. Right, they're only just firstly, first talking about what the 
problem is. And he then did this same study. It was a detailed study. He did it again, some, I think, 19 years later, and almost the exact same things were happening. So we want our doctors to listen. We want our managers to listen. We want the people we're dealing with in a delivering customer service to listen to what we're saying. And leaders, yeah. managers often assume that they know it. No, you got to listen. I'm now going to be quiet and listen to both of you because you've got more wisdom to share about listening right now. Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, I hate to say as I was listening to you, this thought came to my mind. <laughs> but that's not really good listening. <laughs> but it really intrigued me what you said. I guess those doctors wanted, they knew, as you said, they knew what the person is going to talk about. So uh, to save time, they interrupted and they want to solve and give the, uh, you know, the solution. Don't, don't we do that? Yeah. Don't leaders also do that because they know what the person is talking about and they want to solve and they don't have time. And this is what I want the leaders listening to this uh, uh, podcast no, to know. Uh, we know that listening to others is taking more time. It is taking more time out of your agenda, out of your schedule. It is something unexpected. Most of the listening is not scheduled within the meeting, actually. We barely can cover the points of the meeting and uh, the, the items on the agenda. But guess what? When you listen, you actually save time. When you spend more time listening, you're saving time. We know this in customer service. What do we say? You listen to the uh, client who has barged into your shop or into your office to complain. That was not on the schedule. They are taking your time. And suddenly they are bringing a problem and you want to solve it. Guess what? Listen fully. Don't solve it. Let them finish. And they will be happy with that most of the time because I was like this. I uh, barged into the restaurant uh, last week and I complained about an item which wasn't, uh, which was smelling bad and we had to, to not to eat it. And suddenly the cashier is listening to me. The supervisor came and then the chef came. Everybody's listening to my lecture and uh, ranting. They fully listened to me. They didn't give any uh, explanation. And they want, when I finished, they wanted to prove me wrong by giving me an item. I said, no, it's good. It's, I'm good. I'm enough. I, I believe you. They just made me listen. Most of the time, we want to say what we want to say, and we don't have to look for a solution thank you for listening me for listening to me for long but i hope i made the point so listening saves time doesn't take more time so if you listened about what your wife wanted for something special you would have saved <laughs> you would have saved not only lots of dirhams but a lot of time as well because the first thing she says was i just want a short trip around Bahrain. <laughs> <laughs> phoebe and uh, sorry yeah phoebe go Please yeah, so me. again, I, I, listening to this uh, story. Before you go on, let me just say what Muhammad was doing was just reinforcing what you were saying about the cost to organisations yeah. where when people don't listen. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that 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 example in the hotel, I, I was with you, Muhammad, when you are sharing that, you know, so that 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 space, I was also standing and observing you and what the... Uh, what the uh, chef was doing, what the rest, waiter was doing, what the manager was doing. So I, I think that there is, uh, I, I want to link it with the leadership challenge, you know, modeling the way, listening to the people in the room. That was something very critical there. You know, the uh, restaurant manager modeling the way, listening. Then the chef listening, the waiter listening and making it, felt that you are important, the customer, the client is important in that stage so that they are also willing to offer you something extra, role modeling that. How can I make this client happy? And they, they are not arguing with your assumptions in that process. Can I just round this back? Beautiful. 
tie this back to our conversation last week. What was our what was our topic last week? Leaders, no, the week before. Leaders ask important questions. It was the week before. Leaders ask important questions. So when leaders ask important questions, what are they going to do? They have to listen. They have to listen. Because you're getting gems of information when you ask those great questions, and you've got to listen to what the people are saying. And to come back to the point that Phoebe keeps so correctly banging on about, <laughs> this is this. If you don't listen, it costs money. And Muhammad said, sometimes we think, um, you know, if, if we if we what talk or listen, it will take time. But we have to listen. We have to understand what the issue really is. We often have to ask questions and draw people out on what the real issue is. What's the most important issue for yeah. you right at the moment? You might say. And and if I if I may add. Now, this podcast is not a workshop or a seminar where we can um, elaborate and detail the steps of listening, the barriers between you and listening, what should you do to uh, increase your listening. That can be done in workshops. But I can give one tip. If each one of us, uh, including those who hear us, listen to us, just remember when I, when I ask you this question, who is the person you'd like to talk to and they listen very well? You will immediately remember that person or whether it's in the future, sorry, in the past or in the present. But you will remember someone. If you just think of that person and what he or she does when you talk to them and how do you enjoy them listening to you, that is your model. You don't need a course on that. Just when... A, Think of the moment when you are very comfortable uh, l uh, talking to that person. That person is a good listener. Learn from him or her and apply what they do. Be with the person fully uh, when you listen to someone. And I, I certainly take your point about this is not a workshop or a training program where in that situation we can be specific and give examples and so on. Here's, but here's one tiny little example that I will give that I always do in a training program. How do you feel when someone interrupts you? Now, in some cultures, they say, oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> That's what it is. I don't mind. But sometimes. But I say, how do you feel? And most people say they don't like being interrupted because they're trying to share an idea or a concept or thoughts or concern that they have, and they don't like it when someone interrupts them. I say, well, here's the learning. If you don't like them interrupting you, how about you practice not interrupting them? Bibi. Yeah, so, uh, you, you know, <laughs> what, what, what I just want to highlight is when you are listening, you are actually... Um, shutting down the employees, whoever you are, whether it is employees, family members, whoever it is. And what can be the psychological impact on them? And as Mohammed mentioned, you know, when you reflect on someone who is loved by you, and they have this competency of listening well, which increases the morale, which improves the... Uh, interaction positively and we experience you know that encouragement of the heart again i come to the leadership challenge listening encourages the heart i want to touch upon because that is very crucial in our interactions and the cost is tremendous if we don't yeah. listen with intention yeah with focus phoebe it's, that's really well said Mohammed, please yes. give us your final thoughts, and then I have a final thought for everybody. Well, as as Phoebe does with us every week, he uh, at the end uh, goes through the five challenge, helps us go through the five uh, practices of exemplary leaders, which in every uh, challenge we take every week, like this week is uh, listening. We can see clearly that the all five practices are actually good answers, great answers for the challenge of listening. He mentioned model the way already, and now he mentioned 
encourage the heart. What are we left with? Uh, inspire a shared vision, clear listening, challenge the process. Uh, I mean, it's clear listening. Yeah. And of course, enable others to, to act. What better than those five leadership uh, practices that will help you really listening? Yeah, excellent. Be a listening leader. Really good. I like to say this to people, and I say I hope that this is what I live by, that I will listen and I hope others, I want others to do this too. I'll always listen with an open mind and an open heart. Listening Beautiful. listening is learned. Talking, it's interesting though that when we are when we are a child, our parents teach us to talk. Say mum, 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 uh, what mum? Uh, and then a little bit later, when the child child is not listening, a child mum will say, you're not listening. Why aren't you listening? And the child will say, what's this? What, what do you mean listening? I don't know what that is. They haven't been taught. We are not taught to listen, but we are taught to talk. And it takes a little while, I think, for us to recognise the value in listening with an open mind and an open heart and genuinely yes. listen to what that person has to say. Gentlemen, as always, my deep appreciation for the time and for the wisdom that you shared with us today. And I wish you a safe, healthy and inspiring week ahead. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, friends. Please, leave, please subscribe, comment, reach out. Absolutely. Reach out through this email, Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at more no at leadership challenge middle east dot com. Are you listening? Yes, everybody's listening. See you next week, Delvin.